Greetings, 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 everyone, and uh, welcome to the Arlington Weekly News. I'm Craig Nolan. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Daniel Pineda. And I'm Miriam Gennari. Welcome. Senor Pineda. Senor Pineda. Hey, Senor Pineda. Pineda. Como Pineda. esta? Como esta, yeah. Senor Pineda? Como esta, Craig? Bienvenidos. Not Cinco de Mayo yet, guys. Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> well, we're working on it. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we have our usual uh, lineup here tonight, um, our news and community bulletin board. Adele Quo um, is on assignment, assignment. <laughs> and uh, uh, she went to Iceland for this trip, so <laughs> we're expecting a good report good from that. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, Miriam is here with uh, an interview tonight, and she's talking with Joe Pelton. Oh, yeah, Cosmic Hazards. About Cosmic Hazards. That's coming up on this edition of the Arlington Weekly News, our News for Seniors segment, uh, and then uh, we'll wrap it up with an interview from Shannon Augustus as mm. she's talking with uh, Emil Bryant. And uh, that's our show. But before we go, here's a social media reminder. Absolutely, from my Mr. Here. Nolan. You can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News and the number one. And also Facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly News. All right. Craig. Thanks, Daniel. Here we go with the first of our news items. News for seniors' glasses on, and they're working. Got them, got them cleaned off, even. Well, here we go. The Arlington County Board has tasked County Manager Barbara Don Ellen to uh, facilitate facilitate, that is, input from residents on Phase 2 of the 2013 Long Bridge Park Master Plan. This plan includes design for the aquatics and health uh, fitness facility, parkland, and environmental work. The county will begin collecting suggestions and comments in April from uh, multiple sources, uh, including a countywide survey, open meetings, focus groups, neighborhood conversations, county commissions, and user groups. To learn more about the Long Bridge Park project, visit the county's website. Daniel. Well, Craig, speaking of the county manager, Barbara M. Donnellan, the county manager has just announced that it's time she's retiring. Donnellan has served the community for over 30 years. She will retire in June this year. Deputy County, county Manager Mark Schwartz is expected to be appointed acting county manager while the county board will run a nationwide search for a replacement. And uh, speaking of retirements, and we were another local public uh, figure who has decided to throw in the towel, as it were, is Delegate Bob Kupika. Uh, the Democrat from Alexandria represents the 45th district, which includes parts of uh, southeast Arlington. Mr. Kupika emailed, emailed rather, his supporters to uh, inform them of this and let them know that he won't be seeking re-election this fall. This adds another open uh, seat in the November 2015 ballot. So stay tuned for that. Daniel. Well, Craig Arlington Public Schools Traveling Trolley won the 2014 Magna Awards program for school districts with enrollment over 20,000. The Magna Awards recognize districts across the country with outstanding programs that improve student learning and support community involvement in schools. A group of school board members, administrators, and other educators chose the awards from almost 250 entries. APS's Traveling Trolley was designed to be a fun way for parents and students to get from their local school bus stops to the nearest public library and has over 20,000 members enrolled. All right, Daniel, moving on along now to our CBB Community Bulletin Board file. If you're interested in working for Arlington Public Schools, uh, then you should attend the 2015 APS Recruitment Fair. It's coming up Saturday, March 21. Uh, this event runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Wakefield High School. Be sure to provide, bring along your resume and uh, teaching license, teaching certificate, or proof of eligibility to get a Virginia teaching license. No advanced registration is required. For more information, visit the Arlington Public Schools website. Daniel. Well, Craig, Arlington Food Assistance Center, AFAC, will host their March Madness food donation drive between now and March the 31st, being, uh, bring canned groceries to food drive locations at the Central Library, Cherrydale, Shirlington, and Westover Branch Libraries. Uh, Kinder House Toys and Simplicity Urgent Care by Innova. There will be a race to see who can collect the most food, and the winner will be posted on April the 1st. All right, Daniel, and also in our CBB file, AFAC 
has another event in the works. Their Spring Garden Kickoff will be held Saturday, March 21, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can get an introduction to Arlington's urban agricultural scene, school and community gardens, permaculture, rooftop and container gardening, and irrigation, and a lot more. You can also talk to local gardeners who supply fresh vegetables, vegetables <laughs> to AFAC. Other attractions include rain barrel distribution, free seeds for AFAC gardeners, and refreshments. For more information, visit their website, www.arlingtonenvironmentgrain. What? Oh, rain barrel. <laughs> My goodness. Rainbarrel.com or twitter.com uh, at AFAC tweets for more details. Sorry about that, Daniel. Well, Craig, the Lean and Hungry Theater Co., along with USO of Metropolitan Washington, Baltimore, is presenting a shortened version of Othello at the Artisphere. The play will be on Sunday, March the 22nd at 6 p.m. This interpretation looks at the effects of war and PTSD. Before that, at 5 p.m., there will be a veterans artist exhibit from the 296 Project. Afterwards, at 7 p.m., there will be a discussion about problems faced by veterans and the role of art therapy. Some of the profits will go towards the local USO chapter. Visit leanandhungrytheater.com for tickets and for more information. Craig. All right, some information now on uh, the David Brown Planetarium right out there on Quincy. Science fiction fans who are... Anywhere from uh, 10 to 100 years of age may be interested in upcoming panel discussion on putting the science in science fiction. This event will be hosted by friends of the David M. Brown Planetarium on Sunday, March 22, 1.30 in the afternoon at the Planetarium located at 1426 North Quincy Street. The program will be moderated by Tom Schad, host of Fast Forward Contemporary Science Fiction, Cost is $7 for adults, uh, 5 for seniors and planetarium members, and 3 bucks for kids. For tickets and information on upcoming programs, check their website, www.friendsofplanetarium.org. And just a reminder, uh, in case you have, have or haven't noticed, our, our good friend Rich Masabney uh, is at home recovering from uh, some medical procedures, and we wish him well and a, a speedy recovery. Get well, Rich. We're thinking about you and hoping for the best. All right, uh, we'll be back with our News for Seniors file right after we hear from Miriam and her guest. Here's Miriam. Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Sustainable Scoop. I'm Miriam Gennari, and today my guest is an honored Arlingtonian who is a big part of why Arlington is such a sustainable and livable community. He's also the Director of Space and Advanced Communication Resource Research at George Washington University, as well as an author of a new book, and bo your new book is called Space Debris and Other Threats from Outer Space. Welcome, Joe. Glad to be here. Thanks for coming. Now, tell us a little bit about this book that you wrote. Well, uh, it's a book that covers a variety of hazards uh, from outer space, and the video we'll be seeing shows uh, several parts of it, but this uh, we're talking about tonight is about solar hazards and how uh, what we call coronal mass ejections from the sun uh, that is a blast of ions that can hit the Earth's uh, uh, atmosphere and do very bad things. It can this... create power, power outages, it can create uh, loss of satellites, and a number of other things that could shut down our communication systems, our navigation satellites, and so on. So we're about to watch that video, but I want our guests to not worry because you will offer some solutions as we come back. But let's go ahead and watch the video you brought. The sun, one of the greatest wonders of the world. We rely on it as a friendly neighbor to light our world. And thus, we sometimes forget what a raging nuclear fusion-based inferno it actually is. In late September 2013, part of a 200,000 kilometer long filament 
that recently ripped through the sun's corona, burning. Well, Joe, that's kind of frightening. Um, the idea that all of this could happen and really change the way we live. Can you tell us about how uh, an, a coronal ejection yeah. might have an impact on us here in Arlington? Well, first of all, at the big level, the National Intelligence Council has put together seven what they call black swan events that could really create major problems to planet Earth. And one of the sevens is a really massive coronal mass ejection like happened uh, back in uh, 1859, the so-called Carrington event. Uh, but more recently we've had other events like the Montreal event that happened uh, as recently as 1989. Anyway, uh, there are things that can be done about this, uh, but we really do have to worry about power systems, loss of satellites, and other things that could uh, create uh, inadvertent uh, changes to our infrastructure. Uh, when I chair the IT Commission here in Arlington, uh, we have looked into things where we might be vulnerable. Uh, we have something called the, the uh, supervisory control and data acquisition network that controls our traffic lights, our water and sewerage and so on. And we've uh, tried to put into uh, uh, effect a better security system so that there couldn't be wrong signals. But if you had a powerful enough event, you could get a wrong signal that goes out through uh, our SCADA uh, system, for instance. That's just one example. But the key right now is to better understand what are the levels of threats and what we can do about it. And now, there is I, I think it's important, though, for people to understand that we're not relying less but more and more on computer systems as we integrate systems. So, I mean, it's not just our lights will go out, but, I mean, it would be difficult for air traffic control to get us back on the ground. Is right. that the case? Yes. In other words, there could be uh, airline crashes. There could be a whole host of things that could go wrong. So not just here in right. Arlington, but around the world. Well, uh, in the United States, around the world. And, of course, it would really depend on sort of where the major strike uh, occurs the Earth's magnetic sphere tends to push these further north or south. Uh, so that, to a certain extent, is a little bit of protection that uh, places like Montreal and Sweden and so on are perhaps the most vulnerable because of that. So I'm grateful to know right. that you're thinking about right. this and working on this. Who else is working on this issue? Well, the key thing is that there are uh, two congressmen, uh, particularly Congressman Sessions, has put a bill into Congress, uh, 3410, that has passed Congress and is now to the Senate. And basically, it is uh, requiring the uh, Department of Homeland Security to do a much more intensive study of what are the threats from uh, either solar flares or coronal mass ejections. And we have to worry about uh, both. The solar flares, uh, there the problems can be genetic mutation, and that's a big problem that we're already seeing in the uh, uh, south uh, frogs with mu mutations coming from uh, solar radiation. My goodness. And also, uh, from uh, cancer uh, in the extreme south of uh, Australia, where I've uh, been teaching uh, in Adelaide, uh, skin cancers, 40% elevated there. So, so there's uh, some protection. Right, right. We can try to protect ourselves right. topically, but right. there are some initiatives in Congress that we need to follow and watch. Right. Can you tell us what those are? Well, as I say, the first thing in this bill is to ask the Department of Homeland Security to do a much better assessment of where our vulnerabilities are and what types of things could go wrong in terms of power outages, loss of satellites, and so on. So that's step number one. Know what the problem is. Okay. We're going to pick up on the other steps yeah. that we need to take, as well as discussing some of the other cosmic hazards yeah. that we need to be concerned about in our next segment. I want to thank you, Joe, for coming here and starting this conversation. And viewers, I hope you will join us back for another discussion of space debris and other threats from outer space.
And, and right now you can watch that on YouTube. And you saw that again. Um, just type in Cosmic Hazards on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Miriam Gennari. I'll see you next time. Back to the news desk. That's what you Wow, that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty interesting. Joe Pelton sounds like a, a real well for for to, uh, lack of a better word, a space junkie. But he is an expert. <laughs> he's been around the space industry for quite a while. Yeah, he knows all the people that are not only looking at new technologies, but looking at the existing infrastructure that we have and how we can improve it. He's and so a much really of it is guy. really dependent on satellite technology. There's a, a, a gazillion of them up there floating around. And in, in orbit. <laughs> we will we will have two other more um, segments to talk to Joe about his book. Right. And we will talk about space junk and we'll talk about comets. So more to come. Good. More from Joe and yes. you. Well, thanks, Thank Miriam. you so much, Good Miriam. job. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay, now as promised here, moving right along on this uh, post-St. Patty's Day edition of the Arlington Weekly News is our news for seniors files. Uh, well, the way a drug works can change depending on uh, what foods, drinks, or supplements you uh, to help pinpoint some potentially bad food medication interactions, uh, you want to hear what registered dietitian Katie Strong has to say about it. Uh, she's from the Virginia Cooperative Extension Office. Uh, this is coming up, uh, and it's free uh, to be located. It's going to be held on at Langston Brown Senior Center on Tuesday. I'm sorry, T Tuesday, Tuesday, the 24th at 11 in the morning. For more information, give them a call, 703-228-6300. Daniel, you better take over this next one here. Absolutely, Mr. Nolan. Well, certified Medicare counselors Karma Ryan and John Glowacki will present a free program on what's new in Medicare. The duo from Virginia Insurance Counseling and Assistance Program for Arlington County will host a question and answer session after the talk. The event is also on Tuesday, March the 24th at 11 a.m. at the Arlington Mill Senior Center. Call 703-228-7369 to register. Craig. All right, Daniel. Also in our News for Seniors file, well, heart disease is uh, the number one killer of women. But the symptoms are often chalked up to uh, acid reflux or the flu or just normal aging. Well, a Walgreens pharmacist will discuss warning signs and ways to keep your heart healthy. That's coming up Thursday, March 26, at 2 in the afternoon at Arlington Mill Senior Center. For more information and to register, I think the number's on your screen there. Give them a call. Here's their number, 703-228-7369. Daniel. Well, Craig, the Royal Hill Senior Center is hosting March Madness activities. That's on Friday, March the 27th from noon to 2 p.m., which will include basketball trivia, classic NCAA tournament videos, and a brief lesson on the sport that James uh, Nasmith invented in 1891. Stadiums, like and sessions will be served for lunch. The cost is only $6. Call your Royal Hill Senior Center to register. That's at 703-228-5722. Craig. All right, then finally in our news for seniors file. Well, do you know how often you're supposed to change oil in your car or what preventative care your vehicle really needs? Well, Kyle Mosher, a certified auto mechanic, will answer uh, all these questions and more, hopefully, to uh, sustain your automotive curiosity. That's coming up Wednesday, March 25 at 6.30 in the evening at Arlington Mill Senior Center. Call to register for this FRWE free program. Here is their number. It's on your screen there, 703-228-7369. And as always, thanks to Judy Misabney of Thank OSAP, you, Judy. the Office of Senior Adult Programs, for helping us out and sending us these announcements. We'll be back uh, with a quick bye-bye if we have time right after we hear from Shannon Augustus as she talks with Emile Bryant. Here's Shannon. Welcome, my name is Shannon Augustus. Thanks for tuning in. I'm here with Emile Bryant, author of Start With a Sparkle. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, awesome. Thank you for coming in. So first, first things first, I just want to ask you, why write a book on pursuing dreams and passion? Well, I'll tell you. My heart, uh, several years ago, I was an instructor at the Air Force's premier education for leaders. It's, a, it's called Squadron Officer School, and it was a fantastic opportunity for me to learn how to teach. While I was there, I spent three years in the classroom and I actually learned how to learn. My students taught me more than I ever taught them. Along the way, one of the things they taught me was I love to teach. 
I love to instruct. The subject matter that I love to teach is helping people be their best. I didn't know that before I started. So I got this bug, this passion for teaching. And out of that, this was in 1999 through 2001, I just exploded. So over the years, when I was in the Air Force as an active duty officer, I just never left that thought that one day I was gonna be able to take that passion and provide it to a broader audience than what I did in the Air Force. So when I retired in 2012, I spent about a year learning about who I was as an individual outside of the institution of the Air Force and decided to write the book. And when I wrote the book, the words just flowed like water. It was wow. wonderful. And it reminded me of what I was writing for. So not only did I have this passion that had been stored up for 12 or 13 years, but I actually was doing the thing I was passionate about, giving the instruction on how to be passionate for the thing you love, how to live it, not just what to do, but not how to do it, but just embracing it and learning to be a part of this universe that just is exciting. It was fun. And I have to say, your passion for what you're teaching, it just leaps out of the book. So <laughs> your passion is contagious. I cannot put the book down. Uh, so you had over, you have over 20 years of experience in the Air Force, right? So you had different ro roles right. that you, you've, I guess, participated in while you were there. So how did each role, um, how did you learn a new thing with each role? Well, the Air Force expects of its officers and every single member, we're all called airmen, and every airman is expected to be an innovator, is expected to be creative, is expected to be a thinker. And each of the jobs that you get in the Air Force relies on that innate talent of creativity and innovation. And most people, when they look at the military, they think you're maybe rigid or you just follow orders. But the Air Force expects every airman to think on their feet and learn how to learn. So. As an aircraft maintenance officer, I was everything from uh, an engineer to a leader to a, uh, sometimes I was doing just basic manual labor. I swept floors. So every one of those experiences illuminated in my life some aspect of my character that came out later. I was also an instructor, as I told you before. I was also a recruiter, and I spent time recruiting for the Air Force Academy and Air Force Reserve, Reserve Officer Training Corps, ROTC, helping kids in high school figure out how they were going to go to and pay for college and serve their nation as they did. I also had a chance to be a commander, probably the pinnacle of my expertise. The thing that I was best trained to do was to command. That means lead large organizations and execute a mission that allowed this nation to remain safe and free. So all of those jobs drew on different experiences and different passions and different aspects of my education, both formal and informal, and that's what brought me to that point. So every single thing I did in the Air Force for over 24 years was part of me expressing who I was, learning how to be a greater individual, a greater person, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity and the experience the Air Force gave me. Oh, I bet. It sounded like you had great experience working with different types of people and, and I guess, helping them pursue their dreams and, and building up their passion. So one thing you mentioned in your book, and I'm probably going to butcher this word, but you talk about, <laughs> is it a kaigi? How do you say it? It's a Japanese word, and it comes from the island of Okinawa, and it's ikigai. Ikigai. Okay, ikigai. that's Ikigai. And roughly translated, it's the thing that you want to wake up for every day. So... If you live in Japan like I did for a few years, you start to see these people who are very passionate about certain aspects or elements of their life. Some are into martial arts, some are learning languages, some are learning the art of uh, trimming and pruning and growing trees called bonsai. Yeah. Everything that these people did, they just put their soul into it. Some of them were runners. You would see some older gentlemen or ladies look like they're 90 years old, but they're shuffling, but they're gonna go probably 40 miles that day. <laughs> and it just, is a thing that wakes them up. So what I learned when I was in Japan is that if you have something that wakes you up, and this has been studied by mostly Japanese but American researchers as well, you'll find, in, you'll find that in my book that there's research that indicates when you begin to live a life where the thing that wakes you up is the thing you know, 
that wakes you up, your life is higher quality, your life is more content, your life has more focus, your life has fewer ups, the wild kind, and downs, the bad kind. And so what you want is you want to be able to embrace that thing, your ikigai, the reason why you wake up every morning. You want to embrace that. And then you want to live it out. You want to figure out what does it take for me to wake up every morning knowing that what I do today is an expression of that passion. That's awesome. And less likely to hit the snooze button, I'm sure. Uh, less likely. <laughs> you want to rumble out of bed. The first chapter of my book is called Rumble Out of Bed. And there's a reason I said that. I remember what it's like when I was a kid and Christmas morning, and my parents would have put things under the tree, and it was just a phenomenal opportunity for me to remember. That's how you get out of bed every day. Awesome, great. Thank you so much for talking with us. It's my pleasure. Thank you for tuning in with Arlington Weekly News. See you next week. All right, thanks, Shannon, Thank and her conversation Shannon. with Emil Bryan. Great and, interview. Uh, Excellent. Just before we say goodbye, just uh, another shout out to our uh, good friend and colleague, Rich Masadney, who's uh, home recovering and uh, we wish you a full and speedy recovery and come on back down here and keeping your seat get back <laughs> get back behind the news desk here rich yes, we miss you we miss you Love all right you. and uh that's a wrap for this edition of the arlington weekly news uh thanks to all of our studio crew and, and the control room crew and thanks to all of you for watching uh next week if you're there we'll be here and we'll do it all again have a safe week take care bye-bye bye-bye